In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can go from color to black and white and then color correct that black and white photo so it doesn't look so dull in Photoshop. I have another set of free actions for you that you can download from the link below or in the icon in the upper right hand corner and that's called black and white photo actions. You'll get all of these different types of actions that give your images a unique look such as sepia, monochrome, or charcoal. Hello creative! It's your graphics girl of graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here with a quick tip to help you design your brand. Here's a photo that I recently took on a walk in my neighborhood in Southern California, United States. And if I wanted to make this color photo black and white, technically that would be to convert color to grayscale or shades of gray on a scale. So by default, an iPhone takes pictures in RGB color mode. Now this would be fine if I were to post this image on a website or on Instagram, for example, because that is screen color or red, green, and blue, the color of monitors or screens. If I wanted to use this image for print, I would first want to convert it to CMYK or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Side note, if you're wondering why black is K, that's because B was already taken for blue in RGB. So to convert the color, you'd come to image, mode, and you would move from RGB to CMYK. But in this video, I'll show you that you can come right up here to grayscale to convert this image into a black and white image. Here you can see that it converted the yellow tones to shades of white. So now in the file name right up here, you can see that it says gray, not RGB. If I show my info palette or coming to window, info, and taking my eyedropper tool, I can hover over different sections of that image. You can see here in the lighter part, the CMYK says 0% value on that. I can't move my mouse or it'll go away, but it's right up here. And when you hover over the flower, it will show you the CMYK values. You see here in the dark area now, it says 80% for the K value, or in terms of zero to 100%, 100% being jet black, this right over here is a shade of gray that's 80%. So in general, you can always trust the values in your info palette versus what you see on your monitor because monitors can vary from screen to screen. But in general here, you want to make sure that gray areas, if I zoom in, that gray areas have some value and the darker areas have more value. That just makes common sense, right? But what if you think to yourself, well, this darker area right in here should actually have more value, not be at 80%, but rather closer to 90 or 95. That's when you could come to your levels with Command or Control L. In your Levels dialog box here, you can see that the channel of gray shows a spectrum between black and white. And what they're showing you here in this what's called histogram is that there are different values for dark, light, and mid-tone values. So, the first thing that you should do is set your dark tones. See here that most of the color information is right up here and there's less here. So with my levels to the side here, if I were to drag in from the left hand side, the slider, why you can see on screen here, cause it's previewing, you wanna go ahead and make sure your preview is checked. I can bring up those values to increase the value or darkness of those tones. Similarly, on the right hand side here, I can drag in, 
I can click that slider and drag in on the left. Going too far will blow it out so there's no definition in the petals of the flower. So you can bring it in just a little bit where there is more color information. As you can see in the histogram, see, there's more information here than there is here. Last step, now you can change the mid-tone values to be somewhere in between the two, right? A little bit too much to the left, it'll start to look blown out, too much to the right, and you get a different effect altogether. So you can make a judgment call with your eye for now. And then last step is you click OK. So there are different ways of adjusting these values. You can use curves or levels. And in this video, I'm just going to stick with levels because it's a little bit easier. So using my history panel here, I'll go back one step to when I first converted it to grayscale. So you can see the before and the after. You might want to come back utilizing your eyedropper tool here, showing your info palette, hovering over the dark area once again, and you can see that the K value is now 90%. And some would argue maybe this is a little blown out and that I don't have any value on the K in the light areas. But I kind of like the look of it. While this was the exact representation when I moved it from color to grayscale, I might want to play with it further to make even more of a difference. Here's another example from a photo that I took in the backyard against the house. Here I'm wearing a bright red dress and when I converted it to a grayscale file, it looked a little muddy. The tones looked a little drab and there wasn't much contrast. Adjusting the levels brings up the darker tones and the lighter tones and lastly the mid-tone values. So here I am. I'll make a duplicate of this layer just to redo this again. And when I bring up my levels with Commander Control L, the levels dialog box appears and you can see, wow, take a look over here. The reason why it looked so muddied is the color information for the light tones doesn't really start until about here. So I should really bring this in to visually match the slider to where the color information begins. And over here, I could say I could bring in the dark tones just a little bit to be where that color information begins. So doing that, once again, I'll start with my darker tones, you know, and you don't want to take it too far and make and lose all definition. Then on the light values, I'll bring that in. Okay. Often you can use the eyedroppers that are here to sample the image where it is. Last step though, I can see that there's more color information in the midtone values right here than where that slider is currently. So let's see what that looks like if I bring that in just a little bit. Something like that looks pretty good. When I click OK, I can compare where I was to the adjustments I made. So it really depends on the image that you have. Here's another flower photo. I guess I like to take pictures of flowers when I take a walk. And if I were to convert this to grayscale, it's really going to look muddied because these values, fuchsia to green, might look vastly different when you convert it to grayscale. Those values aren't much off from one another. So here, when you use your levels, you really might see a huge difference when you bring this in. If I were to go all the way to where most of that color information is, I have really get a difference, but I like to do it incrementally just in case I want to go back and make tweaks later. It's something like that when I click OK. Now, when I show my history panel, here's where I was, and now with my level adjustment. So original, move to grayscale, fine tuning with levels. So just remember, even though changing it to grayscale is a one click step, you might also need to adjust the levels to fine tune and ensure the tonal quality of the image is maintained when you move from color to grayscale in Photoshop. If you found this video helpful, give it a like. Yay!
share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.